what made the Jaguars, a lot of teams were talking to you, what made the Jaguars the best fit? Um, you know, just really looking at the roster and seeing the key pickups they got and just playing against them for, you know, years, especially two times a year and just seeing what they're capable of and we know how athletic they are and I just want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Follow up is how big of a day is this for you undrafted to this point? Uh, it's very big, you know, um, I think it's just really showing how hard of, you know, the work I put in, uh, extra film study, extra work out to practice, just believing in myself, teammates believing in me, and just, you know, staying prayed up, you know, that's how I can say it, just having faith in God, really. AJ, congratulations. Uh, w was it appealing having Jalen Ramsey here as well and getting a chance to play with him? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I became a fan early. Uh, I watched him, you know, in college at FSU. You know, I got some friends that are seminal fans, so they was always talking up about him. And then checked him out the first game. I liked what I saw, but that second game we played against, you know, I, I was like, he, he really has the talent, you know, to be one of the best corners in the league. Congrats, AJ. Have you talked to Blake yet? And how much did that appeal to you, you know, having a teammate that you're familiar uh, with? Yeah, I talked to Blake probably a week before. Um, he was just basically telling me about the city, and, you know, me and my dad sat there and was talking to him and just listening to him. You could tell that he's really focused. Uh, I know a lot of people have been giving him a hard time, but, you know, everybody mess up in the league. It's, it's the NFL. You're not going to be perfect. And, you know, I, I judge a lot of people by how they bounce back or, like, you know, if they're relentless or not, how they face adversity. And one thing is he, he said he's focused. He's in California right now, and I could just hear it in his voice, like he's just ready to go. And, you know, I'm close to home. I'm close to UCF. And um, I'm just ready to compete with those guys, man. I know they're, they're looking for great things. Could you do us a favor and pronounce your last name right so we get it? Boye. Boye. Okay. Yeah, not, not Bouye. Booty. <laughs> <laughs> Boo <-yow>. <laughs> <laughs> How do you stay hungry, you know, when you get a huge deal like this? And, and as far as you've already come, how, how do you stay hungry and keep that edge? Um, just by setting new goals, really. Um, at the end of the day, nobody's going to agree with, you know, what somebody signs for. They're always going to put a label on you. You're, it's not your job to focus on that. Just control what you can. And, you know, I'll be talking to everybody about it. It's just what can you do every day to get better as a person, you know, on and off the field and, what are your goals? If your goals are aimed high, you're going to do whatever you can to get better. And like I said, just believe in yourself. If you want to be the best, you got to put in the work to be the best. I should have asked this as a follow-up first, but what's the worst butchering of your last name? How many times do you, the people butcher it? And I've heard Baoye, Bui, Buyao. Uh, so I remember one time somebody said Bui, and my dad was like, well, they say it so much, we're used to it. So, But it's pronounced Buye, like I said. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that did cut into it. But at the same time, it was an opportunity, you know, felt like it would be a fresh start. Uh, even though it had something to do with money, you just look at the pieces that you had around you. We just signed Calais, Barry Church. Like I said, we played them two times a year, just how athletic they are. We All the games that they lost, they were close, you know. So we knew what they were capable of. And like I said, just to play with somebody like Jalen, and the other piece they got, AC, I was talking to him. I trained with him. And, you know, I just I just knew that I could come here and definitely help this team win and just to compete. Un undrafted guy, not a starter to start last season, correct? Uh, I started probably 11 games, I think or, they said. But was there a point last year where you go, okay, this is going to happen, where you you knew you were going to get the, the big payday? Um, I really wasn't focused on that because when you think about that, it affects your game. Uh I had some ups and, ups and downs in Houston, but one thing that kept me going was, you know, J. Joe, all the DBs, Kevin Johnson, they, they knew the plays I made, you know, early in my career. You know, everybody's saying one year wonder, I'm okay with that. Like, but I believe in my I believe in my ability. I've made plays over the years and those guys pushed me, my coaches pushed me. And the more plays I mer the more plays I made, especially with all the hard work, it just brought confidence just to see happen every Sunday. And then secondly, Tom Coughlin, did he have any uh, effect on you coming here? Or uh, Yeah, definitely. You know, I was doing my research. Uh, I seen the Super Bowls he won in New York. 
and I seen the staff. I was doing my research on the staff, the coaches, and just what they was bringing to the table, their resume and everything. And I just knew that they were, they were trying to turn this around and they're trying to win now. And that's one thing Kaufman told me today. And, you know, that got me really excited. I'm just ready to go to work. AJ, has it hit you yet that you're going to be playing your former teammates twice a year now? And, and how prepared are you to kind of go against them? I couldn't sleep last night because I was thinking about it. No, I'm, I'm serious. So, you know, <laughs> so you're going you're gonna to go from putting smiles on Houston fans' faces to putting frowns on them. Are you prepared for that? I mean, I'm in it to win. I think we all are. Like, we're, we're all friends, like, off the field, but there's no friends on the field. They'll tell you that. Like, we'll shake hands afterwards, but it's war. That's how, that's how we all look at it. Mentioned Jonathan Joseph. How much did him and Kareem Jackson help you, and how much can you pass that on to some of the guys here? Uh, they helped me out a lot. You know, just the way they approached, you know, coming to the job every day. J. Joe, ten plus years. Kareem's coming on ten years, and they, you know, they've been some of the best players in the league. You know, at their position, they they made plenty of plays, as you all seen, and just learning from them, even learning from the coaches that I had up there. You know. At the end of the day, they never gave up on me. I know people gave up on me, but they kept helping me believe in myself. And that's one of the things, as long as you're encouraging others, it helps you better as a person and as a teammate and a player. Because when you're encouraging others, you want to play for each other. You have a pretty good relationship with Aaron Colvin, right? Yeah. Did he do a lot of recruiting? <laughs> uh, I mean, not really. Like I said, I trained with him last year. Uh, I talked to other players, you know, with Houston, with other teams, and they was like, this will be a good opportunity, fresh start. Just looking at, like, the pieces that we got in free agency and who they already had and the r direction that they're going. So I talk to them, you know, once a week. We talk about other stuff besides football, and I just ask them about the city. I ask, you know, Blake about the city, and they basically was just saying, like, it's pretty much, pretty much stuff to do here, but it helps you focus. And that's one thing, just eliminating distractions. Oh, oh thank you. Uh, AJ, the Texans have built up a reputation as one of the best defenses in the league. Now that you see what the Jaguars have here, do you think that they can be in that top five, time five realm in the league? Uh, I believe so. They they finished as one of the top defenses in the NFL last year. Like I said, the record might have not shown, but you've seen what they were capable of. And like I said, I'm coming here to work, and I want to make sure I can you know, help out as much as possible to get them number one. And just being around a great defense in Houston, you've seen how those guys work. And you want to try to implement that here with practices, meetings, how you approach walkthrough and everything. Well, he, he got it. All right. In the AFC, no matter who you play, whether it's, you know, A.J. Green or Julio in the NFC, who's locking up the number one receiver on uh, this team? I have no clue. I, I, that's, a, that's a good question because I know – you know, especially what I heard about Ramsey, I heard he he get mad when he asks for help. So, <laughs> you know, I'm you know I'm gonna have some pride, and I'm going to want to follow because at the end of the day, it's about respecting this game. So, if they want us playing left and right, we'll do it. I'm I'm hoping they say for me to follow the number one receiver because I feel that made me better as a player and made me approach the job even more.